small sized all electric cars have gotten a reputation of having short driving range, whereas the Renault Zoe, which starts from £27,000, claims to run for 240 miles on a single charge. Now, the GT line that we've got over here starts from £32,000. And if you'd like a more detailed breakdown between the two different model trims, and indeed the third one that sits in between, do check out our full written review. It'll be down in the description below. And also down there, you'll find a link to our Instagram. If you do use that social media platform, we'd very much appreciate a follow. It's at TotallyEVNet. So let's kick things off and talk about the exterior design. Now, subjectively, I think the Renault Zoe inspires more of a family type of look. It doesn't have that sporty edge, nor does it have that futuristic look like some of its competitors. At the side, it's got 15 inch or 16 inch alloys. In the GT line, you've got 195.55 R16 inch alloys that come as standard. Now in terms of finishes, the Renault Zoe comes in a variety of different colors and it comes by default in a white finish. If you do like the model that we've got over here, it costs around £660 as an additional option. Elsewhere, the car has a front charging port which can be unlocked via lever found by the driver's side door and here you'll find a Type 2 and CSS port. Note the CSS port is only available in the fast charge model which is a £1,000 premium. Now transitioning inside the vehicle, what you'll find is it's got somewhat of an uninspiring design. With that said, it's very practical and very functional. It's furthermore a lot more premium feeling than some of its cheaper all-electric competitors. Now, in terms of technology, you've got a 7-inch infotainment system that comes as standard. In the GT line, the model we've got over here, that transitions up to a 9.3-inch multi-touch colourful display. As for the instrument cluster, you've got a 10-inch colourful display, and again, that can be customised to a certain degree. Elsewhere, you've got Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, which come as standard across all the different level trims, which is actually really nice to see. Furthermore, the integration with Android Auto and the instrument cluster, so yes, apart from the infotainment system, is actually really well done. You can see navigation data straight from your instrument cluster, meaning you don't have to glance at the center of the dashboard as much as you might have to do with some of its competitors. Now, if you don't want to use either of these systems, you can also connect up to the car via Bluetooth. Only the SBC codec is supported only, so therefore audio files might be a little bit disappointed. Speaking about its audio performance, the car has six speakers by default, while the Bose system adds an additional speaker, and that's mainly to do with the subwoofer, and really bolsters up the sound. That's a £500 option. Now, if you'd like a full detailed review of how the audio performs within the Renault Zoe, do check out our review. It'll be down in the description below or on your pop-up banner. What I will say in a nutshell is that the default stock system, the six-speaker system that we've got here, is actually pretty exciting and will please a lot of consumers. Now to control your media, there is a lever found on the right hand side of the steering wheel, which I found a little bit odd to say the least because normally media controls are put on the steering wheel. Nevertheless, this is what Renault have decided and I can't say I really agree with it or really find it very intuitive. Nevertheless, in terms of other practicality notes to kind of mention around the cabin, the center console is really well designed with a small ergonomic gear lever and even a position in front of it to place, let's say, your or your keys or even a small smartphone. There's also an auxiliary input, two USB outputs as well, and also there is a 12 volt cigarette lighter if you want to charge a device. Underneath that gear lever, you've got a place to wirelessly charge your smartphone, which is really nice to see. It worked flawlessly with my Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus. And under it, you've got two cup holder spaces which reside next to the e-brake and the auto hold function. Now onto comfort, the Renault Zoe will seat up to five occupants, which is actually pretty refreshing to see given most of its competitors offer four seats only. As for the seats themselves, they're very much cushiony and soft. You're not going to have any problems, be it on long distance drives or short spirited drives along country roads. The only issue is if you have rear occupants which are over six foot one or six foot two, they're going to struggle to fit because headroom is very limited. As for legroom, there's no issues whatsoever at the back. I'm just under six foot and I've got no issues. At the front, however, you've got adjustable seats to a certain degree and therefore even even if you're a taller sized individual, you won't have a problem sitting comfortably at the front. The only thing worth bearing in mind is due to the battery design of the Renault Zoe that the seats are fixed and pretty high up. So therefore seating height might be an issue if you have got a tall torso and therefore might not be able to see the car properly in terms of your front windshield. In terms of storage capacity, as I mentioned before, you can place a few valuables through the center console, but you can also place a 500 milliliter bottle along the front 
front doors and also let's say a large size purse or a wallet. At the rear it's a little bit more limited whereby you can't fit a water bottle although loose change smartphones wallet or purses will fit in the rear doors. As for boot capacity you've got 338 litres of space which is pretty impressive for a small sized hatchback. Prop down the seats and this figure extends up to 1225 litres. Here this will be perfectly fine if you want to pick up some people from the airport or alternatively if you've got rear occupants and you do your weekly shop you're going to have no issues whatsoever to fit in all your shopping in the rear boot. Of course your mileage may vary depending on how much you end up buying. And now we get on to driving and the first thing I want to talk about is the cabin noise. Now it is pretty minimal I must say the way that uh, Renault have insulated the cabin is to be commended. You don't hear too much road noise that creeps in and nor is there too much wind that deflects off the a pillars. This all results into a pretty pleasurable drive be it in inner city commutes like we're doing right now or on the motorway. Now as for the suspension it's also pretty soft which means that the car does have a little bit of body roll which is not ideal when it comes to driving the car in spirited driving around country roads although when it does come to driving over speed bumps or potholes it means that the car just feels just a little bit more comfortable. In comparison to its alternatives, or should I say rivals, the Renault Zoe is definitely more comfortable to drive or to sit within the cabin. It's softer suspension makes for just more of a leisurely and more pleasurable drive. The same could be said about its steering wheel which feels a little bit disjointed from the front axle and this four front wheel drive vehicle just seems to not respond as well so if you're really going to be wanting the most responsive type of steering and a kind of driver's feel this is certainly not it. It's definitely the least kind of connected car you'll feel within the road in comparison to all of its other hatchbacks out there on the market. Now in terms of raw performance the GT line of the Renault Zoe will get from 0 to 62 in a claimed 9.5 seconds when actually in reality what I found is via the V-Box Sport the car will achieve this figure in only 8.51 seconds which given the conditions I was testing in which was torrential rain and you know pretty terrible roads I was actually pleasantly surprised to see this car achieve such a figure. Now in order to achieve that it has a single motor which dispatches around 135 horsepower which is the equivalent of around 100 kilowatts of power pretty impressive for a small sized car and very much comparable to other uh, rivals out there. The thing I will say and again which kind of took me by surprise is if you take the car off its eco mode which really softens the, the responsiveness of the car is that in its normal mode the accelerator pedal feels very responsive so if you want that instant amount of power which is around 245 newton meters of torque at any point you're going to get that instantly. Again the same wouldn't be said if you put it into eco mode where if you do put your foot down on the pedal in eco mode you'll get a very sluggish response. Now the reason behind eco mode is to recoup as much energy as possible back into its 52 kilowatt hour battery pack and truthfully that is actually done pretty well via the inclusion of B mode. This can be accessed via downshifting on the gear lever. Now you have to bear in mind very much like a few of its alternative or competitors shall I say you will need to do this each time you access the vehicle but it's pretty intuitive and very easy to do. In terms of regenerative braking mode it's unfortunate that you can't customize the level there's only one mode to choose from and in this respect what I found is the regenerative braking level is good. I would have actually liked it to be a little bit harsher in terms of its braking so not quite BMW i3 levels but one that would somewhat sit in between where you can actually come to a complete stop so if I take my foot off the accelerator over here it does come to a stop but it does take a little while before that happens and I just wish it was just a little bit harsher and therefore allow me to do a one pedal approach just a little bit easier. Now of course you can recharge the batteries via the type 2 or CSS port found at the front of the vehicle. It's worth bearing in mind that the CSS port is only available in the fast charge variant of the car which is a thousand pound premium. Here you'll get from 0 to 80% charge in around 70 minutes. 
If you were to use the Type 2 port, it's capable of 22 kilowatt input. That takes around three and a half hours. While if you were to go on a seven kilowatt public or home charger, that figure increases to around nine and a half hours. Now staying in eco mode, what you'll find is the car will get closer to Renault's 240 to 250 mile claim. While if you take it to normal mode and drive in, let's say mixed driving conditions, what I found is the car achieves around 190 to 200 miles, which is still vastly impressive in comparison to some of its competitors out there, where the Renault Zoe actually outperforms a lot of its alternatives and makes the small size hatchback incredibly important for people who don't want to have range anxiety and furthermore are people who are coming to an all-electric car for the first time. Now granted it's not going to yield 500 to 600 miles on a full tank of petrol and it won't quite compete with hybrids but for an all-electric car specifically in this small sized segment it's actually very impressive. Now when it comes to safety systems the Renault Zoe at least in the GT line has a whole host of different technologies built in to make it feel a little bit safer. You've got front and rear parking sensors, rear view camera, and you've got blind spot assist for example. There's also cruise control which is pretty much standard but the biggest thing for me and the biggest sticking point was lane keep assistance. In other words where it tries to keep you in the center of the lane when you're on the motorway. Here the Renault Zoe was truly awful in this domain. In comparison to all other cars I've tested it was definitely the one which came out worst. It just really struggled to keep up with the lines, would often drift off and kind of ping around and therefore it's just a feature that I ended up disabling because I felt it hindered say, safety as much as it tried to make it as a safer drive. This was very much not the case, at least not in the Renault Zoe and not from my experience. And this all leads me on to my verdict. What do I make about the Renault Zoe? Well, subjectively, I think its interior and exterior design lack a bit of va, -va voom And in terms of driving characteristics, it's not really aimed at spirited driving around country roads. On the plus side, it's very practical given its boot capacity and also the fact that it can seat five occupants. And more fundamentally, it will last around 200 miles on a single charge, which is great for people coming to all electric cars for the first time and kind of class leading in terms of all electric small sized hatchbacks. As a result, the Renault Zoe gets Totally EV's Best Buy Award. Now, of course, you might agree or disagree with our verdict, so do let us know in the comments below. And if you like this type of review, give it a like, subscribe to see more, and of course, favor and share to always help the channel grow. I've been Chris from Totally EV. Take care and bye-bye.